You're watching Destiny Church. Live your call, fulfill your destiny. My name is Kai. Um, I'm one of the pastors of Destiny Church, and it's a privilege to be sharing the word to all of you this afternoon. No? So, um, so, anyone here, you're here for the very first time. Ayun, ayun. Um, good job, Pono, for being here. Now, anyone else? No, can you just raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you? All right. Welcome, welcome, bro. No, welcome, sis. Welcome, bro. For um, no, thank you for joining us. No, baka meron pa dun sa likod that I haven't acknowledged. I can't really see clearly from here. But you know, thank you for joining us here. No, you could have been anywhere, uh, but you chose to be with us. And I believe that the Lord has something in store for you. No, and really for for everyone. No, this this afternoon. Now you might be asking, no, bakit? Bakit Destiny Church? No, why do we call ourselves Destiny Church? No, for the benefit of those who are here for the very first time. You know, we call ourselves Destiny because we really believe in that word. Now, we believe that no one here is an accident, right? You might feel like an accident. You might have gone through um, very tough times recently, you know, but that doesn't make you a mistake, right? That doesn't make you an accident. In fact, in... Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 an often quoted uh, verse here no sabi dito for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future no so i want to tell you this no um, that god has a plan for you okay Merong plano ang Panginoon para sa iyo and this is a plan to give you a hope and a future no meron kang kinabukasan no sa sa ating Panginoon okay so let's pray no before we dive into the word Father we thank you for uh, once again Lord for the service for this opportunity to um, to learn more about you to to consider your word to be ministered Lord by you and uh, Father, change us, change our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would cause a deep, fundamental change in our hearts, Lord. Lord, meet us at the point of our needs. Now, some of us here may be sobrang um, it's coming from a place of pain, of hurt. Lord, I pray that you would use this time to just change our circumstances, Lord. I pray for your presence. And Lord, I pray na. Um, you would cause me to be faithful, Lord, in preaching your word. Father, we love you and we surrender this time to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Sige, palakpakan natin si Lord. I heard that. Okay. So, um, well, I'm sure na nakita nyo naman na no, sa labas na, you know, we're, we're kind of entering in a uh, New season ngayon, no? It's 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 the Holy Week, no? No, no parang it's it's the official start of the Holy Week, and um, it's Palm Sunday, okay? And it marks the entry, no, sa ating Holy Week. And this is significant because at this point, um, Jesus, no, during his time, it was just a few days, no, uh, before he meets the cross, right? The suffering of the cross, which I believe now we're gonna talk about more this week, especially next week and the next Sunday. Um, but also the glory of the resurrection. Okay. So what we want to do um, now is to pause no, from our current series and consider, no, an- ano bang ibig sabihin ng cross? No, can you say that with me? Cross. Yeah. So we want to consider, ano ba yung ibig sabihin nito? Kasi as you know, Filipinos, tama ba na the cross is a very familiar symbol to all of us. Okay, so it's good that we kind of take this time to ponder, okay? To consider also its claims and um, what it means for our lives. Now, so for today, we're going to look at the most famous verse in the Bible. Now, anyone has a guess? No, nandiyan ba? Wala pa, no? Okay, yan. So I already heard it, no? John 3.16. So there's really none other more popular verse in the Bible, tama ba? And um, I believe lahat tayo, no? e- even before some of you became Christians, you're already familiar, no? tama ba? 
You've probably heard of this in the media or in school, probably pinamemorize sa inyo. Um, you know, this is you know, taught in schools, quoted by clergy, sang about, you know, there was even a song, no, tama ba? Yung, um, Tell the World of His Love. No, it talks about that, um, early 2000. And, you know, even in culture, no, it's a very popular, you know, athletes would like to mark it on their faces. You know, si, you know, si Tim Tebow, for example. No, anyone here knows Tim Tebow? You know, familiar. So he's a Christian, a football, former football player in the States who got really popular no, because he marked no, yung John 3.16 sa mukha niya. And he was eventually, uh, kung binan yun no, dahil, dahil doon. Um, but yeah, no, so that's what we're going to talk about. No, we're going to deep dive on that verse. So let's read the verse. Okay? And we're going to read it in um, different translations so that we can appreciate it better. So I want to read from ESV, no? John chapter 3, verse 16. It says here, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Okay, familiar? Okay. No, so in, in NLT naman, no, medyo modern language, sabi dito. For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. Some translations would say everlasting life. Sa ano naman tayo na the message translation, Med, no, medyo paraphrase. Sabi dito, this is how much God loved the world. He gave His Son, His one and only Son. And this is why, so that no one need to be destroyed. By believing in Him, anyone can have a whole, a whole and lasting life. Okay? John chapter 3, verse 16. Right? So perhaps there's no sentence more well-known than what we just read. Tama ba? Right? Whatever age you are in, whatever culture you're coming from, you've probably read this. And it certainly gives us a vivid picture. Some would even say shocking. No, in a good way, because of, again, it gives us a picture of the magnitude of God's love, right? There is a magnitude there, and I believe that's one of the reasons why, no, kahit hindi Christian, no, they, they kind of feel warm about this verse, no? They're, because God so loved the world. Now, if you think about it, no, especially in our, you know, culture, um, you know, sometimes we think about God, as a God with a stick, tama ba? A God of merits. So for example, if you, um, if you do something good, you receive a good job from God, right? But then if you do a bad job, no, you tripped, you will, uh, bagaan yung thinking natin, no, mapapalo tayo ng Lord, no? Parang in a way, ganun yung thinking natin we, when we talk about religion. But in here, right, there is a magnitude to it. Tama ba? No, sabi doon, God so loved. Like, there's a volume. Can you feel that with me? No, na merong so eh. Like, there's, there's a so, there's a volume, there's a magnitude. Like, God poured out something na mabigat. And it's love. Right? And I want to read from also, no, sa language natin. Sabi dito no, in Tagalog or in Filipino, sapagkat ganoon inibig ng Diyos ang sanlibutan. Kaya ipinagkaloob niya ang kanyang kaisa-isang anak upang ang sino mang sumampalataya sa kanya ay huwag mapahamak. It hits home, no different, no? kundi magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Right? But I think, more often than not, no, we, we forget that that verse, you know, there's a much bigger context to that. It's actually just one sentence that's part of a longer conversation, right? Mahaba tong conversation ito. And I want to go through that conversation, right? And we'll find that conversation, of course, in John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. So medyo mahaba ito, so stay with me here, no? 
Okay. So verse 1. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. No, just a side note, no, I like it when, you know, Jesus answers. Yung parang alayo ng sagot ni Lord. <laughs> Here's a con, it was Nicodemus, you know, coming at him with a topic, and then Jesus kind of answered differently. No? Pero we'll get to that later. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when, I'm sorry, Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water in the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Verse 9, Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Very confused, no? Jesus answered him, are you the teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. But you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses, now listen to this, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. Verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hate the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out, carried out in God. And are you still there? Right? So that's the longer conversation wherein we find young John chapter 3, verse 6. It's a very interesting conversation. No? There are um, lots of references. No? So let's start off with the characters. Who is Nicodemus? Because I believe no tayo, kilala natin si Lord. No? Pero sino tong Nicodemus na to? Right? Well, right off the bat, we, um, John, the writer, gives us a um, portrait. No? Tignan nyo lang yung verse 1, no? medyo makikita nyo na. In just a few words, you already have an idea of who Nicodemus is. No? First, he was a Pharisee. Can you say that with me? A Pharisee. Right? And more than that, not just a Pharisee, but he, he is a ruler of the Jews. Okay? So, ibang level to. So, um, himayin natin ng onte no? So, pag sinabing Pharisees, I believe hindi rin to bagong term sa atin, no? Um, Pharisee, no? Parang part na nga ng contemporary language natin. Pag sinabi mong Pharisee, parang hipokrito. Ganun yung tingin natin, no? Uh, parang insult siya, right? Um, the Pharisees, um, they were the strictest religious sect during that time. No, in the time of Jesus. No, there was a number of religious sects during that time, and the strictest was the Pharisees. And Nicodemus was one of them. Okay? So the Pharisees, actually that word meant the separated ones. 
Okay? And that's how they looked at themselves. They were separated. Okay? So, yung, yung, yung Jews themselves, they are a very religious people na, no? Um, but the Pharisees took it to another level. So they added and added um, a lot of things to God's law na wala naman dun, right? To the point na yung normal, regular people, hindi na kaya. <laughs> okay? No? So, um, hindi na kaya makasunod no, dun sa law, right? They emphasize a meticulous observance of God's law as the means by which one attains righteousness before God and retains His favor. No, notice that. And that's what religion does. It's kind of a merit system. <laughs> okay? You do good, you retain God's favor. If you do bad, you're out. <laughs> All right? And that's what the Pharisees do. They were the religious, di makabasag pinggan types. No? And, and because of that, no, they have become this judgmental group of people. Self-righteous, no? in our term today, no? judgers. Okay? Sila yun, no? They judge people. They were the separated ones. No? Wag mo kaming isama dyan. Nilalayo nila yung mga makasalanan sa kanila. Okay? But not only that, no, yun nga, they were all, um, si Nicodemus, he was also part of the, um, what we call the Sanhedrin. Okay? Ito yung ruling council during that time. So parang government. So hindi lang to um, parang um, si, si Nicodemus, no, politician din siya. Okay? So this is the highest national body in charge of Jewish affairs. Okay? So this man, a very religious man, a learned man, scholar. Okay? And we'll also know further, if you read the book of John, he's kind of rich. <laughs> okay? He's kind of rich. Um, he was a ruler. He was elite. But something was, I guess there, there, there are a lot of reasons. You know, scholars would say why he actually came to the Lord. Um, but notice that he actually came at night. Now, did you guys notice that? So, so si Nicodemus, he came to Jesus at night. No? Sabi nila, because, you know, scholars, scholar types usually study at night. So, he chose a time of the day wherein probably Jesus was uninterrupted. Wala masyadong ginagawa, wala masyadong demand, so he came at night. But, you know, there's, there's something to this. No? As, as a Pharisee, he would have lost some social capital if he came to Jesus and kind of, you know, connected with him in public, you know, during daylight, no, daytime, right? So, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night, and he gave himself to Jesus more than the other, you know, people in his group, right? He wanted to know Jesus. And I, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, just in my imagination, in, in, sa lahat ng pagkakarelihiyoso niya, no, he probably felt that something was missing, right? Parang may kulang. And maybe some of you know this is your story. You know, think about this. Um, there are those broken types na lumapit kay Lord. Tama ba? Yung mga bleeding woman, yung, um, yung woman bleeding for 12 years. No? Do you guys know her? Broken type, no? <laughs> yung, um, yung may demon, tapos pinaalis ng Lord yung demon, yung, yung demon possessed. Broken types. But Nicodemus wasn't the broken type. <laughs> he was actually well put together, no, in the religious sense. But listen, he needed Jesus as much as the broken types do. Maybe some of you, that's your story, right? We come in here, okay ka naman, you're good. But then something was missing and it was only Jesus who um, was able to fill it. Right. So let's continue this conversation, no? Kasi yung nga kanina sabi ko na, you know, I love it when Jesus kind of parang sinabi ng Lord kay Nicodemus, no? tama na yung small talk. <laughs> okay? Uh, parang Jesus read, no, like para siyang may x-ray, no, nabasa ng Lord yung nasa puso ni Nicodemus. Okay, sabi ni Nicodemus, naniniwala ako sa Jesus kasi hindi naman kay 
no, no, parang we, I believe that you came from God because no one can do the works that you do unless He is from God. Right? There's an acknowledgement there. Okay? There's a humility there. But Jesus got to the root of the problem here. Okay? He answered differently. No? Probably medyo naguluhan si Nicodemus. Okay? So Jesus no, replied that there is a need for men to be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. And as Jesus explains further how people are born again and what exactly it means. No? How many of you, ako na to be honest, yung word na born again, medyo, medyo inis ako na onte. <laughs> okay, kasi, um, you know, when I was young, I wasn't, I, I, I didn't know the Lord yet, no? Pag narinig ko yung word na born again, ayan yung mga hindi nag, ano, hindi nagsa-sign of the cross. Ayan yung mga alive-alive. <laughs> okay. Ever, ever heard of that, no, yung tipong, or maybe kayo, no, inisip nyo yun towards people who are Christians, no? And, and, and ako, no, to be honest, ganun yung thinking ko, eh, until I became one. <laughs> okay. And, and, and yeah, no, you, you know, to be born again, it, it's not, it does not mean to join a religion as as the connotation goes, no? Right? That you're part of this, that you're part of that. To be born again, it means to have an encounter with the Lord. <laughs> a life-changing, identity-changing <laughs> encounter with the living God. To experience His forgiveness, His love for the first time. Right. And in a sense, that's what Jesus was talking about here. And listen, no, ang ganda ng response din ni Nicodemus. No, wala siyang framework, hindi niya maintindihan. He was thinking about it in the physical sense. No, What was his response? His response was, can a grown man go back to his mother's womb? Right. So, hindi nagtatagpo dito. No? Um, of course, Jesus took the time. No, He, he was patient. He answered and and iba yung thinking ni Nicodemus. <laughs> okay? Right? And uh, um, you know, during that time, I was reading some some background studies on this one. You know, during that time, it it it's not unusual to refer to Gentiles, yung mga hindi Hudyo, as uh, yung mga Gentiles that embraced no Judaism. Right? or yung mga tinatawag nila na proselytes, no? It's not unusual for people to call them newborn children. Okay? Kasi they were new to Judaism, right? They were Gentiles. Now they found God, no? No, quote-unquote. But sa mind ni Nicodemus, he had no framework because he wasn't a Gentile. <laughs> Parang in his mind, I'm already a Jew. I don't need that. No, do you guys get that? Right? There was simply no framework for that kind of thinking. Gentiles needs to be born again. Jews, no. I'm, I already know it. <laughs> right? Here's the reality. Every one of us needs to experience that. You know, my, a little bit of my story. Um, I, I, I'm, before I came to know the, to know the Lord, I was really religious. <laughs> um, you know, rigid in my thinking. And um, I would, there was a time that I would even go to confession. I'm not sure kung ano yung, sa iba na, kung, kung ano yung rate nyo, no? Pero ako, I go every week. Kasi talagang, rurok na yun for me, ah. <laughs> Mer- meron ata every day, no? Pero, ganun eh, I was so, I, I had issues I, I needed the Lord, but I was just that. I was religious. I felt like, yun na yun, right? Then again, Jesus was gracious. No, so that was the conversation. Right? And then in verse 14, maybe you're asking, now what, the, what does this have to do with the cross? Thank you for asking. I'm going to answer that question. No? So, <laughs> In verse 14, what does Jesus say? Sabi niya dito, as if parang 
um, nag-shift ng gears, nag-pivot bigla si Jesus. Sabi niya, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. So Jesus was referencing a story that happened 1,300 years ago during the time of Moses. You know, it's beautiful when you actually see the thread from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Okay. So the Old Testament looks forward. No, Sabi nga nung isang author, si Jesus ang substance. <laughs> right? It points forward. It's a foreshadowing. So there was a story in Numbers chapter 21 verses 4 to 9. No? So let's read that story so that we can appreciate it better and make a connection. So, um, quick background. So this was a time where in the people of um, yung mga Israelites, um, led by Moses, they, were, um, they got out of Egypt for a very long time in captivity. So they were in the wilderness and this happened. Right? So they were on their way to the promised land. So verse 4, from Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Grabe, no? Stop there for a moment. You know, like you were just in captivity for 400 or so years. And God took you out. God was gracious. But then they were complaining big time. So in verse 6, sabi dito, Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that He take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made the bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. So that was the story that Jesus was referencing in John chapter 3, verse 14. Now, we know this now, that Jesus was actually describing the cross. That Jesus, in a matter of, ngayon, Holy Week, no, in a matter of days, is going to be lifted up. He was going to be um, nailed on the cross. Okay? But during that time, the people who were hearing this conversation, no, especially si Nicodemus, baka nakikinig din yung mga disciples, they, they did not understand that. <laughs> in fact, their concept of a Savior, a Messiah, is a political figure. They, they wouldn't know, right, or expect a suffering Messiah. A Messiah who would be nailed on the cross. Right? So, during that time, no one understands. No? So, we are in a much better position, church, because we know. We know. Okay? So, it's, this is worth investigating. See, in this story, the story with Moses and the people of Israel, <coughs> the, this story clearly illustrates the problem of humanity. And what's that problem? Can you, can you make a wild guess? Sin. Can okay, you say that with me? Sin. No. Hopefully, walang natutulog, no? Or nakikinig lang kayo. I'll just assume na nakikinig lang kayo. <laughs> so, Sin, right? See, in that story, they complained. They, they, they complained. No, they were complaining to the Lord, right? They were complaining about the food, about Moses. So they were dying of snakes. But really, if you look at the reason behind the reason, they were dying because of their sin. Okay. And just like that, no, we, we, that is our problem. 
as we often say here, no, man's biggest problem is sin. We need a Savior. Right? We need a Savior. No? Death is but the consequence of sin. No, we need to talk about this. No? No, in, in, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, sabi dito, for the wages of sin is death. Merong kabayaran yung kasala. Ito yung sweldo. Okay? Nang ng kasalanan o kamatayan. Right? And in Numbers, same story, no, in verse 7, we see the response of the people. After a lot of them died already, they got poisoned. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. And you know the solution? A bronze snake on a pole. It's like the cross. That whoever looks at it will be healed. Right? And listen, no? You know, <laughs> the solution, sabi ni Pastor Carl, and we were talking about this earlier today, no? sabi niya, the solution, yung bronze, it, it, it would have made more sense if siguro ang ginawa ni Moses, gumawa siya ng like naghiwa ng mga medicinal herbs, No? Tama ba? Like in, in, practical tayo, no? Kung si Moses naghiwa-hiwa tapos gumawa ng ano, right? Ng uh, antidote for the poison. Right? But the solution is, um, it was unscientific, it was illogical, no? some might say outrageous, foolish, na mamatay na yung tao and all they need to do is, look at me, simple. Look at the bronze snake at the pole. Right? There's no need for a seven-step program. <laughs> right? Mamamatay ka na eh. Magsi-seven-step program ka pa. Right? Sabi ng Lord, look at it. Now, sabi nga ni Charles Swindoll, if, if I can just quote him. Sabi niya, the Israelites' experience in the desert was a foreshadowing of what Jesus did for all people when He was lifted up on a cross. When we acknowledge our sin, take complete responsibility for our guilt and come to the Lord for healing, the poison of evil loses its power to kill. The solution to sin and death is something that makes no sense. The cross, we're going to talk about that more, of all the things that could serve as an instrument of saving the world and become a symbol for, for Christianity, it was the cross. A, a, a means for execution, synonymous with torture, right? That was an instrument for torture. Yet it was the cross. Now, sabi ni Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the message of the cross is foolishness. Absurd and illogical to those who are perishing and spiritually dead. But to us who are being saved by God's grace, it is the manifestation of the power of God. And how many of you know, know what I'm talking about? Right? How many of you know that you tried so many things? Right? You tried religion, you tried relationships, you tried going up the corporate ladder. And all you needed was the cross. Right? No. Biggest problem of man is sin. Therefore, his biggest need is forgiveness. And that's paid for on the cross. No. So what is the message of the cross? No. Let's, with the time we have, no, let's look at the words of John chapter 3, verse 16. Right? Because in here, sabi dito, for, right? And if a sentence starts with four, it's usually connected with a sentence before it, right? So sabi niya, this is how God loved the world. This is another translation. For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Sabi ni Luther, no? this is the most famous summary. No? Sabi niya, um, John chapter 3, verse 16 is the heart of the Bible. It's the gospel in miniature form. <laughs> like if you can boil it down, 
This is it, right? This is it. It's so simple that a child can understand it, yet it condenses the deep and mar- marvelous truths of redemption in, into this, these few words. No? Let's, let's break it down. No? First of all, God. It says there, no, let's, let's start with that word, God. Can you say that with me? God. Who is God? He is the greatest lover. Right? For God, is there anyone greater than God? <laughs> right? You know how many of you you are fans of or you've seen you've seen this in the internet, yung talagang fandom. Talagang yung mga fans, they would really go out of their way to just to have just to be looked at. <laughs> Siguro makita yung makita yung um, star that they're kind of, you know, following. They would go to their concerts here and there, even go abroad. But listen, <laughs> listen to me. God, the greatest person that you will ever know, look down on us. You know, it's amazing na parang God could have looked down bad trip to mga to, ah. <laughs> Pwedeng ganun eh, di ba? Parang, Sinira niyo yung mundong ginawa ko. Right? But God looked down on His people, on us. Sabi niya, I love these people. I'm gonna do something about this. Right? God! Right? Ano yung next words? No? So loved. <laughs> What's that? That's the greatest degree. No? Sabi nyo nga, so loved. No? As, as I was saying kanina, no, could have been God loved the world, right? But there was a volume attached to it. No? Listen, God so loved the world. <laughs> right? in, in fact, in other translations, no, some scholars would say, na it, ito yung rendering, no? for so greatly did God love the world that He gave His only Son. Okay? God loved the world so much. That's the greatest degree. This was no ordinary love. Come on. You know, um, I remember what Blaise Pascal wrote. No? <clears throat> and some of you guys might be familiar with it. You know, sabi ni Blaise Pascal, the mathematician, um, paraphrase, there's a God-shaped vacuum in our hearts. Merong vacuum dyan sa puso natin that we try to fill up with all other loves. Right? We, we, we try to fill it up with recognition, with um, all sorts of things, possessions, relationships. But there is a hole there that only God can fill. Listen, God so loved. Mahal na mahal. Tayo. Right? Sabi niya, the world. What's the world? It's the greatest number. There's, there's, no, <laughs> there's nothing greater than that. No? The world. You know, in, in the Greek, the world is actually yung, yung word where we get cosmos. Right? That's the word used for this. No? And in, you know, it talks about the world, the universe, worldly affairs, the inhabitants of the world. So this was not an indifferent kind of love, like God loves an inanimate object. No, God loves the world. No, um, see, and 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 listen. No, that would have been scandalous, because in the mind of a Jew, mahal lang ng panginoon yung Jew, not the world. Come on, right? Not the Gentiles. We are the chosen people. What, God, what, what, what we can see here is, listen, kasama ka. Pwede ka. Kasama ka. Right? Maybe you're here, you, one of the greatest problems of this generation, loneliness, isolation. Mahal, mahal tayo ng Panginoon. And what goes next? 
God so loved the world that He gave. He gave. What's that? That's the greatest act. Okay? He gave. In fact, in Romans chapter 5, you know what, what makes this really amazing is that God gave. Not because we're perfect. It would have been a different story if we are perfect and then God gave, then wouldn't make any sense. Right? In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, sabi don, But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were still swimming in our sin, while we were still doing what we're not supposed to do, God gave his son to us. And the next one, his only begotten son, his one and only son. What's that? That's the greatest gift. Right? The most valuable thing in the whole universe. The son of God. You know, ako, no, I have a baby son. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I love my son. No? He's, his name is Coco. And, you know, sometimes I just hold my son and I just cry. <laughs> I just, oh my gosh, I love this little boy. Right? I'm going to do everything to protect this little boy, do everything to provide for him, for my family. But that's just like a drop in the bucket of how God loved His Son. Can you imagine that God loved, yung love ng Panginoon, ng, ng Father to the Son, is infinitely more than what we would ever feel. Right? And then next, no, that whosoever, can you say that with me? Whosoever. What's that? That's the greatest invitation. Kahit sino ka. Kahit sino ka. Regardless of your background, right? Regardless of who you are, regardless of how, how dark your past is. Sabi dito, whosoever. Right? Whoever you are, there's still room for you. Meron. Hindi na uubusan. Even if you consider yourself the greatest sinner. And maybe that's how you view yourself. You've messed up. Right? You know, I'm reminded of Jesus' um, similar invitation sa Matthew 11, verse 28. Quick lang, no? Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Sabi ni Jesus, basically, if you are weary, come. Are you weary? Are you tired? Are you feeling guilty? Is there something in your past? Gusto mo kalimutan, hindi mo magawa. Right? And a few more, no? Believe. Believe. That whosoever believe. What's that? It's the greatest simplicity. Believe. Can you say that? Believe. Right? Believe. Okay? Hindi complicated. Sometimes we make it more complicated. <laughs> believe. Right? Now that means that you are placing your confidence not anymore in yourself, not anymore on your goodness, you're placing it on God, on Jesus, on what He has done for us. Okay? What simplicity? Could anything be more simple? Believe. Again, <laughs> let's turn to Jesus. In Him. No, believe in Him. Who's that? That's the greatest person. Again, and the object of our belief is not in ourselves, no, not in our good works, but in Jesus. Should not perish. What's that? That's the greatest deliverance. Listen, merong solution. <laughs> right? The cross means that um, there can be fundamental change. Like at the heart level, we can actually 
be changed. Sabi nyo nga, change. Right? How many of you long for change? A deliverance. Right? This is why people who are drug addicts, yung talagang wala na, yung walang wala na, can actually be changed. That's why we still have hope. Right? Merong solusyon. But, no? Ano ba yung but? It's the greatest difference. You know, we should be, every time you read a but in scripture, pay attention. Pay attention. Right? Should not perish but have. Ano yung have? Okay? It's the greatest certainty. How many of you know work all your life to have something? But watch it. No? Nawawala rin agad. <laughs> right? To have is the greatest certainty in life. You know, kanina, no, when, uh, when we were uh, preparing, no, kanina umaga, uh, we, we had a short meeting. Nabanggit lang ni Pastor Carlo. There's this interview, it, very recent, ni Kuya Kim. No? Yung, uh, I, I think he, he caught some flack for it. No? Kay um, Boy Abunda. Papalabas ko sana eh, kaso... Um, pero eh, ang ganda lang no kasi tia, um, tinatanong siya, he was being asked about his assurance like no in um, salvation okay and then sabi ni Kuya Kim na if if mamatay siya now he has peace no he's a Christian no? he he has peace certainty and security if it happens now right he's not going to be rattled and he goes on to explain that it's not because of what he did. It's because of Jesus Christ. Amen? Right? That's the greatest certainty. And what? Everlasting life. That's the greatest possession. That's the greatest possession. All other things in this world will go. <laughs> How many of you know that very well by now? Possession... You, you get the latest one and after a few days or after some time, there's already a new one. Okay? Youth, youth will fade away. Okay? No? Tatanda rin tayo. Kukulubot. Mawawala. Earthly relationships, it's amazing, pero it's going to go away. No? Sabi ni Lord, heaven and earth will pass away. Lahat mawawala. But my words will not pass away. You know, that's why it's, um, it's f- foolish to live your life greedy. Okay. In Luke chapter 12, verse 20 to 21, now this is the parable of the rich fool. You know, the rich fool was saying that let's accumulate, accumulate and accumulate. Okay. Let's be comfortable. Sabi ng Lord sa kanya, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Eternal life, this is the greatest possession that one can have. See, what happens is death is not anymore a period. It's merely a comma. You die, but then you live. It's because of Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, why do people reject Jesus? Right? Well, there are a number of things, no? Pero what we can see in the text is, you know, people love darkness. No? In John chapter 3, verse 18, no, the verse that we read earlier, sabi don, verse 19, and people love the darkness rather than the light. Because their works were evil. Maganda sana kung magtapos na lang tayo sa John 3.16 and not talk about this. No? Pero the good news is all the more good when we know the bad news. Okay. People love darkness. Why do people refuse to believe in God? It's not because that they cannot believe. It's because they don't want to believe. They love darkness more than light. Kasi 
sa darkness, may tatago mo yung kasalanan mo. Okay. The Pharisees refused Jesus not because Jesus was exposing the true state of their hearts. You know, they tried to hide their sin under the guise of self-righteousness, religion, good works. And secondly, um, worldly wisdom and knowledge that blinds them to the simple truth. No? Sabi sa Romans chapter 1, verse 22, claiming to be wise, they became fools. Daming alam. No? Yung mga Pharisees, daming alam, daming dinagdag. And thirdly, lastly, um, if I may call the worship team, no? hardening one's heart. And, and if, if, if you look at the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, no? sabi doon, ano yung sinasabi ng Lord doon? No? In, in, in verse 10, sabi niya kay Nicodemus, you do not understand. Huh? Verse 11, you do not accept. <laughs> verse 12, how will you believe? Right? How will you believe? Another place in Romans, sabi doon, but because of your calloused heart and refusal to change direction, you are piling up wrath for yourself in a day of wrath when God's righteous judgment is revealed. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 to 8, today when you hear His voice, is it today? Laging today, eh, no? When you hear His voice, don't harden your heart as Israel did when they rebelled. When they tested me in the wilderness. You know, it's amazing, no? All this to say, we, we need a Savior. That's why there's the cross. And the motivation behind the cross is for God so love the world. Right? Ang ganda nung sabi ni John Stott, no? Sabi niya, this English um, Christian statesman, sabi niya, um, let me read that quote. No? God does not love us because Christ died for us. Christ died for us because God loved us. I don't know if you heard that. No? There is, yeah, no, and daming reason, buti na lang, God gave His Son so that we can have hope. Right? You know, going back to Nicodemus, no? ganda ng story ni Nicodemus. Eh. Kasi, I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this story, so, the next time we see him, John chapter 7, if I'm not mistaken, he was advocating due process for who? For Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he was okay. Let's let's not do this. No, parang kausap niya yung the his his club. No, and he was no. Let's let's not do that. Right. And in John chapter nineteen, what do we see? After Jesus, you know, it 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 must have been so amazing. Kasi di ba binato ng Lord kay Nicodemus yung story ni ni Moses. Right? The bronze. Nicodemus probably didn't understand during that time. No? Pero he munched on it. Nisip niya. Took years. <laughs> and then, I, I wonder what must have been like nung araw nung crucifixion and Nicodemus was there and he saw the cross of Jesus. My God, this is, this is what Jesus was talking about. Right? He saw it and like, took him years, right? As compared to, let's say, the woman by the well moment. No? Everyone's different. Right? And in John chapter 19, we see that together with Joseph of Arimathea, no? they took the body and um, Nicodemus with his money, no? dami niyang spices, he used it to no, parang doon sa burial no, to preserve the body of Jesus and here was a disciple who was coming out in the open <laughs> right. and there's also Paul Peter 
you know, Peter the coward who um, thought he was strong, but he crumbled under the questioning of a girl. <laughs> Nanala niyan. Right? And then Paul, who was a murderer, man, change is possible. For God, let me read that again. No? Just one last time. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Let's stand up. And let's pray. Yeah, Father, right now, I just want to pray. Uh, maybe there are some of you, the love of God is an abstraction. It's, it's an abstract concept. And I want to pray for you. you know. Father, right now, um, Lord, I pray for those people who, who need to experience it, Lord maybe for the first time and some maybe for the first time in a very long time. Lord, right now I pray, Lord, that that love, Lord, will be experienced by them. Lord, in, in it be in the form of your forgiveness. Father, I pray, Lord, for faith, Lord, for faith to believe. In Jesus' name. Lord, sabi dun sa word mo that um, whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. That whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. So, Father, right now, I pray for faith. Lord, I, I pray for faith to arise in this place, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we will start looking at You not look at ourselves, Lord, and our situation and how sinful we are, Lord, but look at you, Lord, because you have provided the solution, Lord. Instead of us, you sent your Son, Lord, to die on the cross in our place. In Jesus' name. And, and right now, um, if, if you're here, and you want to give your life to the Lord for the very first time. Right? Maybe you've been with us for the longest time and um, this, this, this just doesn't click. No? Um, pero right now, no, you want to make, you want to surrender your life to the Lord. Right? Okay. Or maybe you're here for the very first time that you got invited here and you say, you know, you want to commit your life to the Lord. You, know, you want to look to Him, right? You acknowledge that hindi mo kaya, hindi mo kaya magbago, mag-isa. Kailangan mo ng Savior. If, if that's you, you know, can you just raise your hands you know, if you want to surrender your life to the Lord? Right? Right, right. I see those hands. Anyone else? No, maybe include na natin if you're here and and you know the Lord, but you want a fresh start. Right? You had issues, but you want to give your life to the Lord again. No, can you just raise your hands? All right. I see those hands. So you know, for those who raise their hands, um, just just repeat after me. You know, in this the simple prayer. Now, Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying in my place. And right now, I surrender my life to you. I make you my Lord and my Savior. I look to you only for my righteousness, 
for forgiveness of my sins. And thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Lord, for those who prayed that prayer, for those who gave their life to you for the first time, Father, I pray that you would just make your presence felt, Lord. Make your presence felt in their lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you would give them the grace and the strength, Lord, to, um, to continue in this walk, in this new walk with you. And Father, I pray that you would even bless, Lord, the work of their hands, Lord. Bless their families, Lord, I pray for deliverance from, from bondages, Lord, from, from, from issues, from sin issues, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name. Let's, let's worship the Lord. At the cross of Romans, where your blood was shed for me, there's no greater love than this. Destiny Church. If you would like to check more resources or donate to this ministry, you can download the Destiny Church PH official app or log on to www.destinychurch.org.ph/give.